Henry the Fourth, Part One, The Plot. Okay, we're going to start with Prince Harry as our central character here. Most of the story and the plot revolves around things that he's involved with, so we're going to put him right in the middle and see how everything sort of works around him. Over here we've got his father, King Henry, his younger brother, Prince John, Westmoreland, and Walter Blunt. These are all the guys that are known as the court people. Now they hang out in the court, they're all on the king's side, so this group is the king's group. Below them, we've got the Percy clan, Northumberland, who is Lord Percy, his son Hotspur, or Henry Percy, and Hotspur's uncle and Northumberland's brother, Worcester, and Lady Percy, who is married to Hotspur, and then a bunch of other people over here, Owen Glendale, he's a Welsh guy, Mortimer, Lady Mortimer, Douglas, Vernon, and the Archbishop of York, and all these people are known as the rebels. Now, who are they rebelling against? Well, they're rebelling against the king. As well as that, we've got over here a group of people known as the Tavern People. We've got Falstaff, Bardolph, uh, Poins, Pedo, Gadshill, and the Hostess. The Hostess runs the establishment that these guys hang around with. Poins and Harry are, are friends. Pedo is like Harry's... Um, personal assistant and bite off his false stars personal assistant these guys all hang out in the tavern and Harry also spends a lot of time in the tavern in East Cheap hanging out with this motley crew now at the start of the play King Henry is disappointed with Prince Harry and particularly disappointed in his behavior and the reason for that is because Hal is spending too much time with these guys and the king doesn't like that doesn't think it's fitting for the heir to the throne to be hanging out in taverns, hanging out with this motley crew here. Meanwhile, while that's going on, the king speaks about Hotspur and actually thinks more of Hotspur and wishes that Hotspur were his son rather than how he thinks. Hotspur's got far better qualities than his son, would be more fit to rule. And so the king wishes and, and proclaims that he would prefer Hotspur to be his son rather than how. So the king's really quite upset with Prince Harry. Now we've got these guys over here, Mortimer, and Mortimer was fighting against Glendower, but then ended up being taken hostage by Glendower, uh, and then through that, ended up actually marrying Glendower's daughter. She's Welsh, uh, he's English, they can't speak each other's language, they can't really talk to each other, but they're in love nonetheless, and they have married one another. Now Hotspur and Mortimer, they're brother-in-laws. Mortimer is Lady Percy's brother, they're married, so that makes these two brother-in-laws. And so Hotspur's brother-in-law, Mortimer, is technically being hostage uh, to Glendower in Wales. And so that uh, doesn't really please Hotspur too much because he wants the king to set Mortimer free and the king doesn't want to do it. So this makes Hotspur angry. Hotspur wants the king to release Mortimer. King Henry has his own reasons for not wanting to release Mortimer. Pretty much Mortimer was the guy that was proclaimed next in line to the throne uh, after Richard II, and the king disposed of Richard II, and so he's probably pretty happy to have Mortimer stuck in Wales. It means he can't come and take the throne off him. So that's probably King Henry's reason for not freeing Mortimer, happy to have him stuck in Wales. Of course, this doesn't sit too well with Hotspur because this is his brother-in-law, and he wants the king to release him, and the king won't. While Northumberland, Hotspur's father, and Worcester see an opportunity here to plan this rebellion to overthrow the king. And so they sort of play on Hotspur's temper and they sort of tempt him with this plan to say, hey, there's an opportunity here, let's gang up and let's get rid of King Henry and let's actually put Mortimer on the throne. So they want to crown Mortimer, um, the next king who was proclaimed by Richard II by overthrowing King Henry. So that's their plan, that's the rebellion, that's what they're hoping to do. Now Glendower obviously is pretty happy with this plan, so he's going to be willing to help because that means that his son-in-law son Mortimer is going to be the next king, so he jumps on board with that. And furthermore, the Archbishop of York gets roped in as well. The Archbishop of York has a grudge against King Henry IV because King Henry IV killed the Archbishop's brother. And also, furthermore, the Archbishop brings this God factor to the mix of the rebels. And so if they've got the Archbishop there, a man on the cloth on their side, that sort of gives their cause a little bit more weight. It looks like they're doing the right thing. It looks like God's supporting them. So that's another reason why the Archbishop of York has been brought on board. 
Now, meanwhile, while all that's happening, Prince Harry's having a fantastic time hanging out with these guys in East Cheap. And he's hanging out particularly with this guy, Falstaff. Falstaff is sort of his surrogate father, and Falstaff is like corrupting Prince Harry and leading him astray and teaching him uh, the wicked ways of the world, if you like. So that's going on in East Cheap while that rebellion is being planned. But... Prince Harry, how does actually have a plan to turn his life around and become much more honourable and behave the way he should when the time comes to do that. And that time will come at Shrewsbury, at the Battle of Shrewsbury. So that's where we're heading into now, this big battle between the rebels and the king at Shrewsbury. One of the problems is, though, for the rebels is that Northumberland, Glendower and Mortimer all fail to show up to the fight. That leaves Hotspur vastly outnumbered by the King's men. But he wants to go on and proceed anyway uh, in his plan to try and overthrow the King. What happens is the King offers these rebels a bit of a pardon. He says, look, lay down your arms, tell me what your grievances are, we can sort something out. I want peace to come to my country. He passes that message on to Worcester and asks Worcester to pass it on to Hotspur, but Worcester lies about this offer from the king because Worcester thinks that, well, yeah, maybe Hotspur will get away with this. He's young and he's sort of been uh, led astray by me and by Northumberland. He's going to get away with it most likely, but the king's not going to let me get away with it. He's going to cut my head off. So he doesn't pass on the offer of pardon that the king gave to Hotspur. That means that the battle is going to go ahead and Worcester can take a fair bit of the blame for that. What happens is Hotspur and Hal meet on the battlefield. Hal defeats Hotspur, kills him in battle, and what this does is redeems him in the eyes of the king. So this whole idea about um, the king being disappointed in him, when Harry saves the king and then defeats Hotspur in battle, uh, the king, the, Harry wins the king's favour again. That's absolutely fantastic. Meanwhile, Falstaff, who's um, sort of the bad guy of the, the play, although we laugh at him, we think he's funny. He doesn't do a lot of great stuff, doesn't have a lot of great qualities. Furthermore, during the Battle of Shrewsbury, he's acting even more disgracefully than normal. In the end, what happens is Prince Harry, right here in the middle, uh, ends up becoming the hero of the play. Blunt, Worcester and Vernon all die. Douglas is captured and then released by Hal. And Hal is seen to be a really honourable guy. And at the end we find that uh, the King's people are going to go off and chase down the other rebels who were planning to overthrow him. And thus endeth the lesson F.